I got into college, I was a pretty average student. I just didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I couldn't figure it out. I knew that I wanted to work with people. Finally, uh, my counselor recommended that I try speech pathology. And I got in there and they kept saying, how many of you guys want to do speech? And how many of you guys want to do audiology? And I was like, what is that? It's everything that I wanted in a job. I love getting to know my patients. It's so cool, it's so exciting. We get to deal with a lot of really neat technology. Being able to see patient satisfaction. When you connect with that patient. And it gives you goosebumps and that feeling never gets old. I'm Kristen, I'm a first year student here at UNT. It wasn't until I found audiology that suddenly my average student tendencies turned into straight A's. And literally the difference between being an average student and a straight A student is interest, finding something that you like. I found that it was kind of amazing the tests that we had. We can measure someone's hearing. We have tests that people don't have to respond for us to see. I always thought it was really cool. So another thing that's really great about this program, most universities for audiology only accept maybe 9 to 12 students a year, which is incredibly small. But because of that, when you get into the program, you kind of have this close-knit group of people. It, it's, it's almost like a sorority fraternity type of vibe. It's definitely different. When you find a group of people who share the same interests as you, you guys are all going through the same struggles together. You, you guys are all freaking out about final exams at the same time. And I find that it has been such a positive experience. I'm a student at UNT and I love it. Hearing has so much to do with the brain and it's, it's such an intricate and interactive system and I thought it was really interesting and so to make this a career that I can help people, there's no specific story that I have that just was like this is it, this is the job for me, it's just been more of every time they come in and it's just so hard on them because they're upset that their hearing isn't working and their ears are broken essentially and so when they come in and they're just really disgruntled and their quality of life has shut down and then they come in and we help them and then they're leaving and you know quite a few people have been like you're a miracle worker and like I'm not a miracle worker I'm just doing what I'm learning but I love it because it makes me feel fulfilled. I was studying geochemistry at UT and then I realized that I didn't like spending 16 hours in a lab by myself and realized hey I'm really good with people even though I thought I wasn't and I fell in love with my patients once I came to audiology. At one of my off-site rotations, I had a patient with pretty advanced Parkinson's disease who, against the wishes of his family, got hearing aids. We got him custom fitting hearing aids and he worked endlessly to get those hearing aids into his ear, even with his tremors. And just seeing him accomplish that and be able to get them in and see his happiness with himself once he got them in and be able to hear, it was just so inspiring. I loved him so much, he was, he was incredible. My name's Daniel, um, I'm a third year doctoral student. First, I didn't know what audiology was. Uh, I came from out of field, I actually started as a teacher. And I came in. My version of it is you help people communicate. So how to reach that communication level for those who may be hearing impaired or uh, have some difficulty hearing or listening. I'd say audiology is like a mix between the sciences and the humanities where you get to really sit there and one-on-one -on -one work with the patient. And then on the other hand, you have all this technology to work with um, at your disposal. So many new technologies are coming out, direct to iPhone things, uh, direct to cell phones, streaming, uh, just the ability to communicate, well it's just so much greater. As a first year, I did research with Dr. Moore. He actually was one of the founders of something called the auditory brainstem response. What that looks at is the neural response to sound. As you listen to sounds, certain brain generators can be mapped out. We did that with the zebrafish. So we looked at ototoxicity, or ear poison, how that affects hair cells. Those little hearing cells that are in our ear are similarly structured in fish. We looked at the ototoxicity uh, effects on fish and how that applies to humans. Coming out of high school, I didn't even know what audiology was. I got a degree in social work and from there it kind of led me through a path that took me to speech pathology and eventually to audiology. 
So yeah, there's uh, lots of research opportunities. Uh, the one that I've been working on with Dr. Gopal involves listening to iPods and so we would test people and then have them listen to the iPod music and then we'd test them again and see if there was changes in their hearing levels. So I'm an audiologist. I went to graduate school and I got a doctorate degree. Um, the audiology degree is a four-year doctoral program and what we do is we treat hearing loss and balance disorders. I personally love that I get to make a double difference. You know, some audiologists see patients and they make a difference in their lives. But I count myself especially lucky that I get to help patients and I get to teach the next generation of audiologists. My favorite part of my job is the feel-good vibe that you get and the satisfaction that you get from fitting people and changing their lives. What we do is not just putting amplification on, it's not just pushing buttons and doing a hearing test, you're changing somebody's quality of life, you're changing um, a child's trajectory and how they're going to hear and talk and communicate and how they're going to have friends and maybe what they do with their lives. It's not that we're just here as professionals who fit hearing aids all day long. We're really restoring communication, we're restoring relationships and giving people a reason to get out of bed and communicate with their spouse or their family each day and so it's very gratifying to see how we can change lives and how as we just give people the ability to hear how that enhances their communication and gives them a reason to get up and get going in the morning to communicate to go out to not just sit at their home um, and and be lonely or withdraw it gives them a reason to still participate in their community and lifestyle and things that they like to do this field is really interesting. Audiology is a fairly new field. Um, it started around World War II when veterans came back from war and, and hearing problem was, was so common we had to do something about it. And so audiology was born and because it's so new you can meet the people who are responsible for coming up with certain tests and it, it's just fascinating. Everyone's working together. I feel that when I leave this program and I go out into the world I'm really going to cherish the memories that I have made here in grad school. I have met some incredible students and the faculty is amazing. They really go through hoops to make sure that you will succeed. If you're struggling, they want to pull you aside and they want to make sure that you catch up. We have at UNT a 100% employment rate after graduation and I just think that we have a lot of ambition and a lot of success in this program. It's really great being around so many people that are all so driven. I think I definitely made some lifelong friends here in audiology. Almost everyone knows everyone, so when you get out in the field, you start networking, you start going to conventions and functions and things, you'll start to realize, oh, I, I know these people, all the people in your textbooks, the authors of our textbooks, they're still alive, they're people, they're doing research right now, you can meet them in person. I've had a really great experience with my class. We get along very well. As a whole, we've had a really good time together, growing together and having classes together. And we are together all the time because you have labs and you have classes and you, you're just here all the time. Like, I feel like I see these people more than I see anybody else. But an interesting relationship that's grown out of that, it's, it's definitely been a good experience. Even when I was younger, like I liked science over all of it. I liked it more than the English, the history, the math, all of it. Like I liked the science. I liked the body and the brain. And the fact that it's so immersed in science and that you have to know so much science and that it, it just makes it more interesting and more exciting. And, and you're helping somebody and it's because you know, you're figuring out how their body works and what's best for their mind and their brain and how you can help their brain function better for them to have a happier life. So I love that about it. Every single patient, getting to establish rapport with them, talk to them, hear their stories, that is my favorite. Most of the time when people ask you what you do and you say audiology, they say, oh, hearing aids. But actually, audiology is a pretty expansive field. There's a lot with interoperative monitoring, you know, um, monitoring brainstem responses in the operating room, cochlear implants and also helping families learn how to communicate better with one another. I would say a lot of the job is getting to know people and, and counseling them and figuring out how to help them. Most challenging would have to be people and most rewarding is people again because uh, you don't know what they're coming in with and you try to establish that connection, build rapport, but 
sometimes they have a lot of baggage coming in and so you have to kind of tease it out saying okay these are the areas I can help with these are the areas that we can refer you for help but then also on the rewarding side it's when you connect with that patient and you provide that one little thing they need and when their face lights up and they're just like you know what that's exactly what I needed that's that's probably one of the best things I really like research it's been really fun to be involved with uh, things that I didn't think I would be interested in getting to work with the study that I've done with Dr. Gopal has been interesting because I've been able to have exposure to, to higher level testing and things that I won't even have classes on for a couple semesters and I feel like that's a huge jump ahead in just gaining experience. So audiologists can actually work in a lot of different areas. You know, not only are there those like me that work in a university setting, there are those who work in middle and elementary schools as well, uh, working with those kiddos who have hearing loss. Uh, we also largely work for ear, nose, and throat physicians, otologists, and neurotologists, which I actually worked for during my externship year. Additionally, we work in schools, we work in hospitals, um, we even work as uh, representatives for hearing aid companies, cochlear implant companies. What can be challenging is that every person is an individual. Even if you have two individuals with the same hearing loss, they will not function the same. And so you have to personalize each treatment plan for every patient. You know, not only do they have different preferences, but they live in different environments. They experience different things during the day. So it can be challenging to find that perfect fit for patients, but when you do, it's very rewarding. So in the early 2000s, it was required that the doctorate now is the highest level of education you need to achieve in order to be an audiologist, or rather the minimum education now. So prior to that, it was a master's degree, which was a two-year program. Now it's a four-year program, which encompasses the master's and doctorate degree. So it's three years of education in classes and seeing patients with supervisors. And then additionally, the fourth year is called an externship. And in that externship, essentially you're on your own and you're seeing patients and you're working to get 1,600 patient care hours. And then you graduate and you get to be a full audiologist. You do have to have uh, continuing education credits so that you stay on top of technology and research, of course, because we do believe in evidence-based practice, which means that we, we take the research and we apply it so we're doing the best thing for our patients. For us, it's rewarding to see how we can change people's lives. And I think that's something that gets underestimated and it's a challenge it, just in the community for people to understand what we do and that we're not just technicians and that there is a lot of value to what we do. I would say the going range for an entry-level audiologist right out of graduate school in Texas, it's going to vary by region, but in Texas is anywhere between 60 and 70,000. That's a pretty good starting range. Everything's going to depend if you're doing hearing aids, you may get commission, you may get um, a base salary that's less than that, but they expect you to meet a hearing aid quota that then makes up for the rest of your salary. But there are certainly areas to grow. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Certainly there's private practice for adults and kids. There is different sides of medical audiology, whether you're doing adults or kids. There's cochlear implantation, there's interoperative monitoring, all kinds of settings that you can work in. So it's not just limited to private practice, which I think is the number one thing that um, patients or students think that they may be getting into is, oh, I'm gonna work in a private practice and sell hearing aids. You can be an audiologist and never touch a hearing aid a day in your life. You can do diagnostics all day long, which is what I love to do. I could do ABRs all day long on babies and be in a dark room in front of a computer screen and be perfectly happy. You aren't pigeonholed into one thing, and especially if you're coming out of graduate school, you may not have an idea exactly about what you want to do, but that's what's so great about this field is you can explore different options as your time and season changes, and there's always going to be a fit for you when you have the right diagnostic skills and when you've been trained the right way. Hearing is one of those things that if you don't have it, or if you do have it, you kind of don't know what it is to miss it until it's gone. And so for normal hearing people in the community, it's very undervalued and underestimated what we do because they don't have that deficit. They haven't seen what it's like to live in a hearing impaired person's shoes. But the people that come in and they can see what we do for them, they come back and they come back time and time again and they will tell us that we have changed their lives. We get thank you cards from patients all the time. Even from some of my babies and parents, I get pictures of what their kids are doing now. They've graduated high school and are in college and are, have jobs and have majors and are, have started companies and all kinds of things that they're able to successfully do. And so when you realize that you've been a part of that, that is absolutely rewarding and makes it completely worth it. Joy!